Where is that special place that when you feel it, the people feel it? What is that uniqueness that is you? And God has made each and every one of us differently. God can call somebody into medicine and give him the gift of mercy and compassion and he does it with such grace. God will call somebody into administration. You have the ability to govern, to administrate, to put things right and to handle all this. And people will turn around and say, I, I remember when she was DG in that place. How everything fell into place. I remember your significance. God can call you like me to be an apostle, teacher, prophet. And that's your significance. That is how your life affects your world. I don't know what your significance is. The Bible speaks about the ministry of health, but the earlier you begin to discover it, the better it is for you. The Bible speaks about Mary Magdalene. She didn't preach some big fat gospel somewhere. The Bible says she followed Christ and supported of her substance. My God. God considered it worthy enough to document it in the Bible for posterity. For you and I to look at it and never forget her name. That is significance. That was speaks about Joanna, Joanna, the wife of Chusa. Or is it Lydia? Weaver of purple. She was so good. She was the fashion designer of her time. That's what weaver of purple means. She dealt in silk and purple. Purple was what the extremely rich wore. And purple was synonymous also with silk. Silk had to be hand woven, hand made in those days. So you can imagine this was the Armani of their time. This, this was the Paloma Picasso of their time. Is somebody following what I'm talking about? These this, 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 this were the exclusive designers. She was one that held the biggest brand in the city. But her significance was not just that. When she died, the, the, the church did not weep because she was, you know, who are the designers in Nigeria again? Sophisticat. Eh, who? Pardon? Dakova. It was Dakova. I've seen his shop. Nobody will cry for Dakova's shop. The Bible says the church began to weep and said, no, this woman can't die. This woman cannot die. Why? Because she ministered to the saints. Ay, ay, ay. Such a ministry of mercy, of her substance. She ministered to the saints. She filled her time. She invested her substance and found significance. Found significance. Now, let's examine the two. Your values. What would you think means the most to you? All of us. Let's just think. I want us to think and let's talk. What means much to you? You know, I've never heard of somebody on his deathbed thinking about his loose change. Usually, when somebody is about to die, you know what they think about? They think about the relationships in their lives. I haven't called this person. You know, I told you how Daddy Aldo, Professor Ishaya Aldo, I got a call from him two days before he died two days. And he called me. He said, Boye, I want to thank you for you have been so good to my family. I was shaking. I was, I'm telling you, not, not for him to call me, for daddy to call me in itself. <laughs> Woo! Called me all the way from America. I didn't know. He had, you know, very bad cancer. They'd done everything they could for him and all of that. And it was in his last days and in his pain he called me he says I want to thank you he said over the years you have been consistent you have been a son indeed I want to just bless you and he began to pray over my life and he began to pray for my wife and he began to pray for his children for my children and then he kept saying thank you thank you so much I was like God God what have I done what have I done to deserve this when, I, when he dropped the phone I wept. 
for the first time I could hear him. What I didn't know was that he began to call everybody that mattered to him. He called his sons, called his daughters, called nieces, called some professors, called a few politicians, the people that really mattered to him. Not, not the big shots or the big names, the people that mean so much. On his dying bed and when he finished his calls, two days later he checked out and was in heaven. Do we have to wait until our dying day before we remember those that matter? At the end of the day, what matters most? What ma you realize that that phone doesn't matter anymore. It's not, it's not high on your list of values. HTC Evo. The Blackberry Torch. iPhone 4. iPad. You know, you won't remember your iPad when you are looking heaven in the face. What are our core values? Family. Family. Some of us spend our time. My wife and I were talking about somebody we hold so dear. Somebody, a man of means who had been good to us in the past. And we were talking about his children. The first one got into drugs, was chased out of school. The second one got into all kinds of... Stuff. The third one, the one that was my favorite, that used to always be on my lap, got into the same kind of mess. And I was wondering why. I looked at a man of God who served God with his life, crusades all around the world. And I saw his son got into 419, got arrested, got deported, got checked out of, of school. Another one got pregnant here. The other one is into cocaine. And, and I'm saying, God, why? You know why? Because your conduct, your life, your time was not redeemed to conform with your values. At the critical time, you were so busy chasing money. You had no time for your children. They thought the answer was just to give them. Give them. They need school fees. Give them. They need this one. Give them. They need that one. Give them. They need this one. Give them. Discipline involves time and effort. Discipline does. You can give them all the privileges. They would now, they will do iniquity at a different dimension. The typical Nigerian miscreant youth will be smoking Igbo, your own. It's speed. That's the name of a drug. Crack. You wonder, where do they find it? Meth. Somebody getting what I'm saying? Sad. I'm not going to mention names, but I remember when I was first entering Amadou Bello University, the daughter of one of the richest men in this country was in the school, and every Friday she would go out for prostitution. Her father is a multi-billionaire. She had the latest Honda Prelude for her time on the campus, and she would go to Hamdala in Kaduna. A raw one, not, not anything. Why was she doing it? Because when it mattered, your time and your values did not connect. The Bible says redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. This is a year of speed. We might end up finding ourselves running without direction. Running without achieving anything. Running without redeeming the time. How many of you have ever felt as if you don't have enough time? I don't have enough time to rest. I don't have enough time for my children. I don't have enough time to cook. I don't have enough time for my husband. Your wife will say to her husband, say, ah, now wow, I'm so sorry, dear. For three weeks, we have not been able to come together. I've been so busy. Honestly, I've, by the time I get to bed, I'm so tired. Busy doing what? You were busy in, in, in truth. You were busy. But the truth is you didn't redeem the time. You didn't take control 
of your time. Hallelujah. Now I want to teach us just a fundamental way to redeem our time. I need some help here. I have a pen. I want you to write. This means of understanding your time and taking control of your time was established by a man called Covey. And he calls it the time management quadrant. And I found it a very useful tool for us to use to evaluate our, our values and our time. Think about your values. What is important to you? You want to leave a legacy. Am I right? You want to make an impact in this earth. Am I right? That is important. You are looking at me blank. Is it important? You want to matter. You want to have significance. All of us. Okay? That is important to us. We want to leave something behind that touches the world. That is important to you. It could be a good name. That is important, isn't it? Amen? It could be a legacy of, a, 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 of honesty, of integrity. It could be a legacy of selflessness. Indira Gandhi or Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Martin Luther himself or they left something for generations. Now, think in your life now of the values you hold dear. There are some people, you know, there is this, this, this two young people who killed their parents to inherit their money. And they were, one was 16, the other one was 18, Mendez brothers in the U.S., they murdered them. They killed them, cut their body into pieces, put it in a bag, and went and dumped it outside. And for almost a year, the police did not know that they were the ones that did it. They thought, you know, you know it was an, some kind of robber or whatever, whatever, whatever. Until they started seeing the boy's pattern of expenditure. Now, these guys had gone on a serious spending spree. They bought a yacht. They were spending mass they were withdrawing massive amounts of cash and they were leaving it up. When they found out what would happen, it was the death of a maid that used to be their nanny when they were young. These boys, when the parents were being buried, they came to the parents' burial because they had to. They were emotionless, they were unmoved. As soon as they got from the parents' this thing, they went straight to a party. Then they saw them at the maid's funeral. These boys were broken and in pieces. And it was there that they were arrested that this is not normal. Your parents die, you are unmoved. This maid dies. And here you are, you are in pieces. Then they began to investigate further and found out that it was the boys that did it. Why did it turn out that way? Because the parents didn't have time for them. They had money for them, but they didn't have time for them. They gave them everything they thought they needed, except personal time. How much time do you think your children should have of your time in a day? Or in a week? Because these are what matters the most at the end of the day. God will, he will judge us for what we did with our children. Do you know that? Now, I want you to list it. Everything you have in terms of time or in terms of activities, we are going to be splitting activities now, okay? We want to learn how to manage our time. They fall into four categories, okay? There are some things that are important and there are some things that are not important. 